think the pyramids are impressive? Wait until you see the engineering feats of ancient China that literally changed the landscape and sustained empires for centuries. We're re-talking about innovations that challenge our modern understanding of what was even possible in the ancient world. When we think of ancient megastructures, our minds often jump to the pyramids of Giza or the Colosseum in Rome. And while they are undeniably incredible, halfway across the world, ancient Chinese engineers were quietly shaping their civilization with projects of such scale and ingenuity that they continue to astound us today. These weren't just monuments to the powerful. They were lifelines for millions, masterpieces of practicality and vision that have stood the test of time. So forget what you think you know about ancient technology. Today, we re-embarking on a journey back in time to uncover the secrets behind three of ancient China, s most breathtaking engineering marvels. From a river tamed by a 2,000-year-old irrigation system that still works, to a city built on an impossible axis and a canal so vast it connected an empire. Get ready to have your mind blown? Let's start our journey in Sichuan province at a place that looks deceptively simple but is in fact a work of pure genius, the Dujiangin Irrigation System, built over 2,200 years ago. This isn't a dam. In fact, its brilliance lies in the fact that it has a dam-free system designed to work asterisk with asterisk the river, not against it. The Min River flowing down from the mountains, was a source of both life and destruction. For centuries, it caused devastating floods during the wet season and left the fertile Chengdu plain parched during the dry season. The challenge was immense. How do you tame a raging river without blocking it? The solution, conceived by Governor Li Bing and his son, was elegant and profoundly clever. They decided to split the river in two. The first step was carving a channel straight through a mountain on incredible feet using only the tools of the time. They heated the rock with fire and then doused it with cold water, causing it to crack and break apart. This new channel, called the Bayo Pinku, or bottleneck channel, would act as a controlled gateway for water into the plains. But how do you ensure the right amount of water flows through? This is where the second part of the system comes in. The Yuzui, or fishmouth levee. This man-made island, shaped like a fish's mouth sits in the middle of the river. It naturally divides the water, diverting about 40% into the inner channel for irrigation during the dry season, and allowing the excess 60% to flow down the outer channel, preventing floods during the wet season. It's an automatic, self-regulating system powered by nature itself. And there's one more piece to this puzzle. The Fashian, or flying sand, where fl this low spillway acts as a final safety valve. If the water level gets too high, it overtops the weir and flows into the outer river, carrying away silt and sediment that would otherwise clog the irrigation channel. This self-cleaning mechanism is a key reason why Dujiangin is still functioning today. Irrigating an area of over 10,000 square kilometers and supporting tens of millions of people, it's a perfect harmony of human ingenuity and natural forces. A timeless lesson in sustainable engineering. Now, let's travel from the flowing waters of Sichuan to the heart of imperial power, Beijing, the Forbidden City. We often admire its golden roofs and intricate carvings, but the true engineering marvel lies beneath the surface and in its very design. This wasn't just a palace. It was a cosmic diagram, a city built to reflect the harmony of the heavens on Earth. The entire city of Beijing, with the forbidden city at its core, is aligned on a precise north-south axis. This wasn't just for aesthetics. In ancient Chinese cosmology, the emperor was the son of heaven. The link between the celestial and terrestrial realms. By aligning his palace with the cardinal directions, he was placing himself at the center of the universe. This required incredibly sophisticated surveying and astronomical knowledge. Using instruments like gnomons to track solar noon and observing the pole star. Astronomers and engineers established a line of perfect north with astonishing accuracy. But how do you build such a massive complex of nearly a thousand buildings on the soft, silty soil of the Beijing Plain? The foundations had to be perfect. The builders use a technique called hangtu, or rammed earth. Layers of soil, sand, and gravel were laid down and then pounded relentlessly until they were as hard as rock. 
This created incredibly stable foundations that could support the immense weight of the towering structures above. And then there's the question of the materials. The largest stones, some weighing over 200 tons, were quarried from mountains dozens of kilometers away. How did they move them without modern cranes? The answer is brilliant. They waited for winter. Engineers would dig wells along the routes and flood the road, creating a sheet of ice. Then, thousands of workers would pull the massive stones along the slick, icy path. The timber was another challenge. The massive columns and halls like the Hall of Supreme Harmony are made from single trunks of the rare Phoebe Janan tree, transported from forests over 1,500 kilometers away in the south. It was a logistical nightmare that took years, involving navigating treacherous rivers and hauling the logs overland. The construction of the Forbidden City was a testament to meticulous planning, cosmic belief, and the sheer power of organized human labor. Our final stop takes us on a journey along the longest artificial waterway in the world, the Grand Canal, stretching for nearly 1,800 kilometers. It is a colossal feat of engineering that dwarfs even the Great Wall in terms of labor and impact. Unlike the wall, designed to keep people out, the canal was built to bring the empire together. Its story begins over 2,500 years ago, but it was during the Sui dynasty around the 7th century that the various sections were linked and expanded into the Grand Canal we know today. The primary goal was logistical, to transport grain from the fertile agricultural regions of the south to the political and military centers in the north. Before the canal, this journey was slow and perilous. The canal changed everything. But building it was an epic challenge. China's major rivers, the Yellow River and the Yangtze, flow from west to east. The canal needed to run north to south, cutting across these natural water systems. This meant engineers had to solve complex elevation changes. Their solution was the invention of the pound lock, a chamber with gates at both ends that could be filled or emptied to raise or lower boats. This was centuries before similar locks appeared in Europe. It was a revolutionary technology that allowed barges to traverse the changing landscape with ease. The scale of the project was staggering. It is estimated that more than half of the entire male peasant population was conscripted to work on the canal. They dug through mountains, dredged rivers, and built embankments using little more than shovels, baskets, and their bare hands. It was a project of immense human cost, but its benefits were undeniable. The Grand Canal became the economic artery of the empire. It ensured a stable food supply for the capital and the armies defending the northern borders. It facilitated trade, cultural exchange, and the rapid movement of information and troops. It unified the north and south of China in a way that had never been possible before. Today, parts of the Grand Canal are still in use. A silent, flowing testament to an emperor's ambition and the engineers who made it a reality. From the Dujiangin system that works in harmony with nature to the cosmically aligned Forbidden City and the Empire Nighting Grand Canal, ancient Chinese engineering was about more than just building big things. It was about solving real-world problems on a grand scale with a deep understanding of nature, astronomy, and logistics. These projects weren't just built to impress. They were built to last, to sustain, and to unify. They show us a different kind of ancient ingenuity, one based on cleverness, practicality, and a long-term vision that literally shaped the geography and destiny of a nation. So the next time you see a skyscraper or a modern bridge, remember, these ancient masters who thousands of years ago moved mountains, tamed rivers, and connected a continent, leaving behind a legacy that continues to flow and stand strong to this very day. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through ancient China's engineering marvels. If you found this as fascinating as we did, do not forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button for more explorations into the wonders of the past. Let us know in the comments which feat of engineering impressed you the most. See you next time!